All right, good morning. Welcome to Pathway Ministries Revival Center. I'm Pastor Ivan, and it is a privilege to join you guys in your houses and in the travel lodge. We have as many as we can have in Jesus' name. Amen. God's kingdom welcomes all. Hallelujah. It's good. And so we're just excited to be in the house of God with you guys. Uh, you know what? I want to tell you guys, this has been one of the most effective weeks of our ministry ever. In three days, we've seen almost 9,000 people reach with the message of hope online. And you know what? I'm starting to see the enemy's trying to kick back. He's trying to cause people to get attacked with different things. He's trying to shut things down. He's trying to bring negative reports. And I said, hallelujah, we're going in the right direction. When we're stirring up the, the devil's nest, that means that he's losing territory and we're stepping in and taking it. Hallelujah. So that makes me excited. So if you faced a test or trial this week, or you're going through something, I want to tell you, today I've got a message for you which we'll be getting to. But we're going to have a time of worship. And the Bible says, come into God's presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. And this is the word of God. And today I want to tell you anything is possible in Jesus' name. All things are possible to those who believe. And I, I just see a bunch of believers today. Amen. I see a bunch of believers from six months old to 60 years old. I see believers. Amen. Even if you're a little outside that range, you're still a believer. Hallelujah. So we're, gonna, we're just going to believe God to show up and to do mighty things today. In Jesus' name. Amen. You guys ready? Why don't we stand together? I know we're spaced so far apart, but praise God. We can stand and the angels will fill in all the gaps. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm just going to turn it over to our worship leader. Praise the Lord. He is worthy. Amen. God is worthy of our praise all the time. Greatly to be praised.
Let's praise his name. Yes. Yes. This is a divine appointment that the Lord has made with each of us. Yes, you, and none of you are here by accident. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, announcements. <laughs> okay, Tuesday, there's going to be Testimony Tuesdays. You know what I actually heard a couple days ago? Do you know what testimony means? It means do it again, Lord. Amen. Do it again, Lord. The Lord is going to do it again. Amen. Amen. Um, so Testimony Tuesday night, uh, Testimony Tuesday, and then um, which can be, which is usually online at Pathway Ministry Saskatoon Facebook page. And then Wednesday is Bible Foundations course taught by Joyce Roberts McRae online on Facebook, which that, like, you don't even have to be a new believer to listen to that. That is just, everybody should, everybody should listen to that. <laughs> Um, street outreach. Amen. Those interested in joining the outreach group, please text 306-280-9525 so we can let you know of the upcoming opportunities. Yeah, so winning souls, that is the most important thing that we could possibly do here on earth. Um, and next Sunday, December 13th, we will not be in the travel lodge for services as the room is unavailable. So we'll be streaming online on Facebook that morning. Uh, just the regular services will uh, resume here the following Sundays on December 20th. And this is very important. If you are planning to be here next week, please well, sign up. Oh, sorry, yeah, not next week, the 20th. <laughs> planning on being here the 20th. Yes, the 20th, not next week. Not, not next week. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So, yeah, just make sure that you sign up. You can sign up over there, I'm pretty sure. Hey, J just at the back of the, just at that table uh, by those doors. And, um, yeah, so the first service, we're having two church services, and the first service starts at 10 a.m., and then the second will be going straight into the 11.15 a.m. for the second service. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Okay, well, thank you. Thank awesome. you, Lord. And uh, this is a great day to praise Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. He's always worthy. So, yes, please sign up uh, when you leave today if you're planning on coming to the 10 o'clock service or the 1115 service on the 20th. So we're not here next week. Hallelujah. And, yes, you see the giving options there? And, um, yeah, so if any of you has tithes and offerings this morning, we'll just receive those. And we pray a blessing over that, Father, for multiplication for your kingdom's use. Bless those who can give and bless those who can't. In Jesus' name, Father, we just thank you for releasing a multiplication in their lives as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I, just, I got one more announcement. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. I just got one more announcement. So I was just talking with uh, a brother, and God has made a way uh, for us to be able to send 800 Bibles to Africa where they're needed. That's amazing. Um, right now, there's 60% uh, off of shipping right now. So the total cost, we're looking at about two grand ish, I think. So, I mean, for this brother of ours, and so I would like to see that if you've brought your tithe, if, if, if you have anything extra, or if anyone online, if you want to give um, toward that, let us know before sending it, so that we can arrange how to give that. Um, but I think, uh, I'd like to talk to my council, but I think we'd like to help out with that. That's a passion of ours. We want to see the Word of God go places, and so we would like, I'd like to commit I don't know, Henry, what, what should we commit? On the spot, eh? 500? Uh, yeah, at least. So we'll talk about it, but uh, we're going to do that. I think it's scheduled for tomorrow, I think, to possibly get on the plane because we don't want to miss that kind of a bargain. So we thank God for that. And um, so funny, just a few days ago, I talked with Pastor Nsongi in Zambia, and he said that there's a, a children's ministry going on there a group that's that travels and does children's ministry and there's other stuff going on and he said we really could use bibles and i said wow praise god he's putting together something so we are super excited about just being a partner in that just being able to help our brother uh 
in that. And so he just felt God called him to, to donate Bibles. And so we thank God for that. And, so um, if you do have extra and you want to label it on your envelope, just label it as missions. Yes. And uh, we'll look at Amen. it. Amen. And then if we're doing e-transfer, do we, we can just put it in a little message box? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Totally. Awesome, you guys. Yeah, so if you're e-transferring, just put a note there that you would uh, like to send it to missions, your money to missions, and then we will try to do that in Jesus' name. Praise God. Anyway, sorry to interrupt, so let's get back to worship.
And we're so thankful for that. Hallelujah. We want to give you our hearts this morning. Oh, just in reverence and respect and honor. You gave yourself, Jesus.
because you were sleeping on their boat, Lord. In the middle of the storm, Lord, while your disciples were wandering, Lord. Because you know we should just worship you and praise you in the middle of the storm. Because everything will be okay, Lord. Yes. Yes. Lord, we give you our hearts today. We open our hearts to you today. Yes. Purify us and clean us, Lord. Yes. Yeah. 
We offer our life to you today, Jesus. And God, as much as it's so hard sometimes to just release everything to you, God, this morning, Father, we say, come with your fire. In Jesus' name, Lord, the fire can be painful. But God, we thank you for purifying us today. Father, we honor you. We worship you. So God, we say whatever you want to do with us, we offer you everything. Thank you, Lord. Today, God, every need in this place, I just speak the kingdom of heaven. Come to every situation right now. Lord, I thank you for life. I thank you for your power. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, there is nothing too hard for you. And so, Lord, right now, whatever we can't see, we just say we are here to trust you. God, we just lay everything down to trust you today. Jesus, thank you for hearing us. I thank you your spirit is moving. Lord, we just honor you. We worship you. We thank you that you're here. share for a few minutes how to get through times of testing. If you want to be seated, you can. But just before I get into that, how many of you are going through a test right now? Amen. Amen. So you know what we're going to do? I'm going to share, I'm going to share some of the word with, the, with all of you. And then we're going to have some prayer time together. Is that all right? So I want to get this, this done as early as possible so we can have some time for praying and to just minister as the Holy Spirit leads. So we just thank God for His goodness. If, if you can, just turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Wow, isn't God good? Wow. All the time. Man, Amen. Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you today for breathing on their, your scripture, on the words of the Bible, Lord. And I pray today there would be a rhema word. Father, a word that is quickened and comes to life in us. I thank you today for the living word of God. And Lord, I thank you for helping us today learn how to get through tests. In Jesus' name. Wow. You know, in the last few weeks, we were, we've learned how God took Israel through the desert and how God provided supernaturally for them, for His people. But, but they got sidetracked. They, they got in touch with their old desires, with the desires of their flesh and their carnal nature. And because of that, Paul said, you know, so many of them were, were scattered in the desert. They were scattered all over the desert and they, lots of them didn't make it to the promises of God because of their natural desires instead of following the Spirit. And so Paul is saying that if it could happen to those people, it could happen to us. Because what Paul is saying, he's relating when we're born again and, and baptized into Christ. He's saying, you know what, Israel, that happened to them in a type of shadow. When they passed through the Red Sea, that was like when we come through the blood into, into God's presence and we're made whole and born again. It was, a, it was a shadow of that. When they were under the cloud, it's like they were baptized. And Paul's saying, listen, church, if you were baptized, they also were, and they, and they fell away. And so he says, if you think that you're doing okay, 
and that you're strong, beware, just be careful because you know what? Those old desires like to creep in. Doesn't sound too encouraging so far, does it? <laughs> but first of all, it's important to know this truth. One thing we can learn is that God is a person of His Word. And He also expects us to be people of our Word. In this, we find a powerful truth to walk in God's power. How many of you have faced situations that seem like there's a certain test you just seem to fail every time? Mm. Like you come up against it and it's like, oh man, I failed again. No, I'm glad I'm the only one. Praise <laughs> God. I've got to learn from you guys. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes we face situations and we seem to be unable to pass the test. You know, when I think of the word test, I think of school. How many of you have done written tests in school? Yes. Huh. Every second well, of every day. Right. And so, have you failed some of those tests? Have you ever failed a test in school? Yes. Uh huh. What did it take to pass the test? Knowledge. Correction. Knowledge, correction, studying. But you had to know the answer. Right? You have to study to the point that you knew the answer when the problem came, right? Yes. You know what? God has given us His Word and it has answers for every situation in life. Every single situation and test you're going to encounter, I promise you, the Word of God has an answer. That's right. Here's the problem is so many people don't study to find the answer. They don't find the answer. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. If you could quickly flip there with me. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Amen. What does it say? Study to show yourself approved unto God. A worker that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. I love this scripture. It shows us that when we study with an eagerness to show our work as trying and passing a test for God to see, then as a hired worker stands by their work because they did a good job, we will have nothing to be ashamed of. Hallelujah. See, when we study and find the way to correctly dissect the divine message God intended to communicate to us, God's going to show up. A lot of people just preach the word, so to speak. They, they rattle out Bible stuff, but it's all out of context. It does, they don't communicate the divine message that God intended. And then there's no power. They love the form of godliness. But you know what Paul said? I'd rather come with power. I love this scripture. We are like hired workers. God's word gives us answers to the tests that we face. Now let's quickly flip back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 13. Regarding this, this testing. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Hallelujah. Are you ready? No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to mankind. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. But with the temptation, He will make a way of escape. Hallelujah. Yes. That you may be able to bear or endure it. See, we know our own failures, right? We know where we failed. We know this. But today, God is saying this. He wants us to know the victory He offers us yes. when we walk in the Spirit. Read this verse again with me if you can. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But... Stop there. But God. But God. See, what he's saying is, 
everyone in their natural desires will fail. They're going to fail the test. But God is faithful. That means what? You can count on Him. Yes, that's right. That means, but you can count on God that when a temptation is offered to you, or a test is trying to come along that's trying to cause you to force you to fail, you can count on God to show up and to make sure that, that, that the situation doesn't get so hard that you can't get out of it. That's a promise. So that you don't have to fail the test. Oh, hallelujah. Anything that attempts to bring harm to your life by way of offering an enticement or by trying to control you by force loses its ability to hold you when you know God's word. Hallelujah. When you know the word of God. Listen, that's not just memorizing. It's knowing it. It's having a relationship with the word. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Because I tell you when you taste and see that the Lord is good, the other things don't entice you anymore. <laughs> How many have found that? Mm -hmm. The things when you were younger that felt like a temptation and a test that you just craved or your flesh wanted, and once you've tasted of the goodness of God and how amazing His presence is, you're like, that is cheap junk. I want the good one. Come on, I want the wine of the Holy Spirit. I don't want that old stuff. That musty, cheap junk that breaks down. And I'm only excited for it as long as it's like going a Christmas present for a kid. You know, for two days they're pumped, and then they, a week later, oh, mom, I want this. I want this. It's like that's cheap. Isn't there, I used to hear, I don't, I don't even know what the, I, I remember some friends talking about some band named Cheap Trick. That's the devil right there. Yeah. He'll give you a cheap trick. Yeah, that's right. Right? That's what the devil does. Yes. He gives you a cheap trick instead of eternal life. Mm -hmm. He'll try to get you to trade in the best for something junky. <laughs> Praise God. You know, I want to tell you this though. If you're facing a trial, listen, Jesus went through trials. Jesus went through a horrible trial, right? His own disciples abandoned him. What a test. One of his closest 12 betrayed him for money. That's a cheap trick right there. But you know what? He did it and he knew that he had to do something to pay for our sin. And he was willing to go through it. But the devil tried to convince him to take the easy way out. Instead, Jesus went through what we deserved to give us God's best. Jesus wanted the Father's approval in the way he handled his mission to get our salvation. Wow. I want to say Jesus relates to everything you are going through. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. I'll give you just five seconds. If you know your Bible real good. <laughs> Hebrews 4.15. Maybe you have a Bible app. For if we, sorry, for we do not have, Hebrews 4.15, we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points Tested or tempted just as we are, yet never committed sin. Jesus relates to everything we pass through. And because He never failed, and He is on our side, He knows how to get us through every test. Someone say, Jesus knows Jesus. how to get me through my test. If I trust Him. If I trust Him. Who? See, He wants to help us learn to live as winners and victors through His strength. Yes. Right, Merlin? Yes. Yes. Our strength fails to carry us through. But if we get His strength, it becomes supernatural. <laughs> and all of a sudden it's like, I don't know how I got through that, but that was amazing. God carried me through. 
But God is faithful. Listen, you're not a lost cause. You're not a failure without hope. If you will shift your focus from your ability to His ability today, I promise you will find a way to pass the test or temptations that you encounter. We all have limitations. Amen? But God doesn't. God does not have limitations. I mean, He can't sin, but He has no limitations as to what He can do for us. Our chances of success with Him are what? 100%. When we are completely trusting Him to direct our decisions. Why? Because He steps into the test with you. Whatever test, I want to tell you right now, if you turn to God right now, cast your cares upon Him and trust Him, you will not do the test alone. He is, a, he is stepping into it with you. And hallelujah. I love what someone said. You and God are the majority. Amen. You and God have the victory. God never loses. Does He ever lose? No. No. So if you're with Him and He's stepping in the situation with you, that's a sure sign. Hallelujah. You have victory. Glory to God. You know, I always, every time I read the Bible and I study, I find good news. Everywhere I read, I just see good news. All I see is good news. Everywhere I, I look at something and something I don't understand, and all of a sudden I understand the Word, and God lets me know it. And I'm like, wow, that's good news, Lord. That is such good news. The Bible's full of it. Hallelujah. And, and you know what? God wants this morning to dissolve every doubt in you that Jesus can and will help in your test. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 4. And we read verse 15 before, but now we're going to read verse 16. Here's the secret that can shift us from being defeated in tests to overcoming them. Let us therefore, therefore means because of what was just previously said. Does that make sense? Yes. Because we have a high priest who cannot, you know, who sympathizes with us, right? And he was tempted just like we were, but he never sinned. So because of that, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Wow. You know, sometimes we just feel like we come to God and we just feel very defeated, right? That's just human nature. Sometimes we do that. Sometimes I do that. I come and I'm just like, oh, Lord, oh, Jesus, oh, help me, Lord. I'm so broken. I'm, I feel like I'm a loser. I can't win anything. And that's okay to be humble before God. That's okay. But Paul says, as soon as we understand that Jesus went through everything just like we do and He never failed, he says that should shift our way we approach God. Praise the Lord. He says, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Oh, man, I looked up the Greek, and you know what? It said way more than English said. And I got pretty excited. I got pretty excited. When it says, come boldly, that means... The word boldly references that to be accompanied with. With Jesus. He accompanies us to the throne of the Father. <laughs> Are you guys getting this? If he... If he asks the Father for anything, God will give it to him. And when we, when it says you come boldly, that means you recognize that he stepped in the situation with you and he's coming with you to the Father. Whoa! Hallelujah! Woo! To the throne of grace! That is the place of his authority that brings divine influence to your situation. That's what the throne of grace is. The place of authority that brings divine influence to your situation 
that you may obtain. Listen, who remembers the scripture that says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence? Mm -hmm. yep. Listen to this. That we may obtain, that we may take forcefully or violently, violently and hold firm in your possession God's mercy, mm -hmm. which is his compassion that causes him to act on your behalf and to bring you in in a timely manner. Yes. Oh, ho, ho. Come on. Yes. You know what? This morning, I kind of felt a little bit intimidated. I even felt sick to my stomach because I thought, oh God. I had like two or three people that said, I can't make it to church today. And they were like my helpers. And so I, I texted out and I thank you for those who helped. But you know what? Then I thought, oh Lord, I got to apply the scripture right now. So I said, Lord, I come and take a hold of your mercy. I'm grabbing a hold of it. Now, God, you step into this situation for me. Yes. And you have to help me, Lord. You have to aid me and bring it in a timely manner. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so right now, whatever test you're going through, I want you to just begin to clear it with me right now. Yes. Just lift your hand if you're facing a test. Just say, Father, Father. I come in Jesus' name. I'm accompanied by your only begotten son that you favored. And I'm grabbing a hold of your mercy. And I'm not letting go. God, I have it in my hand, in my possession. And your word says that you will step into my situation and provide aid to me in a timely manner. Now, God, I'm doing my part. I'm holding firm. Yes. And I'm expecting you to show up in my time of need. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, right now, you are moving on my behalf. And I thank you, Lord, that, that supernatural aid is coming into my situation. Thank you. I worship you. I praise you, Lord. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Can we give Jesus a hand? Yes. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Father. If you're going through a really difficult test, could you stand today? Spirit, I just ask you for your presence now, Lord, to just assure, bring assurance, God, of everything people are going through in this moment. Lord, I thank you for quickening your word. Thank you for bringing scriptures to them right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you. You're standing with us right now. I just open our eyes right now to see Jesus accompanying us into the throne room. Lord, let us just see him by our side. Come on, Jesus is standing by each one of you. He's walking with you into the Father's throne room. That means you have the ultimate favor of God upon you. I want you in your spirit to grab a hold of his mercy. His divine power that will work on your behalf. Father, we take a hold of it. Lord, I'm asking you on behalf of everyone here, Lord, to have a sense of confidence right now as they approach you. Lord, that they will be completely confident, completely bold before you. Thank you for faith filling every person here today. I speak faith into their spirit in Jesus' name. I speak faith into their hearts. 
And Lord, your word says that there is a mouth and heart connection. So Lord, now let our mouth speak what our heart believes. What our heart is believing you for, God, let our mouth speak it out right now. What is it that you're believing God for? Just speak it out with your mouth. The heart and mouth need to agree. Father, I thank you. Lord, I believe you. God, to send even more people with desire. I thank you, Father, for sending God more provision and more finances and more workers, Father, to reach millions for Jesus. Lord, I believe you for it. I thank you for it. I rejoice in you for it. I glorify you for it. Jesus, you're wonderful. I thank you today, God, for supernaturally giving me strength. Thank you, God. You're the God of the impossible. You're the God that strengthens us. You're the God of our salvation. And I decree and declare the salvation of the Lord over every situation right now. I bind the kingdom of darkness in Jesus' name from hindering anything God is wanting these people to accomplish. What needs to happen in this situation? We take that authority in Jesus' name, the keys of the kingdom, and we bind the influence of the enemy right now. And we release, God, the kingdom of heaven to come in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, release the healing power of God on the situations. Release the angels, Father, to come and minister. The warring host of heaven, Lord, to fight for us. And we thank you, God, for the blood of Jesus that right now destroys the enemy's plans. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He will not overtake us. He will not overtake us. That's right. Your blessings overtake us. Your blessings overtake us. The enemy's problems don't overtake us. And we say today is a mark in the, in the ground, Lord. We put, we put our, our flag in the ground today and we say this is a day of victory. Yes. In Jesus' name and in his blood. This is a day of victory for Canada. This is a day for my family. This is a day for my job. This is a day for my situation. This is a day for my ministry. This is a day that, that marks a breakthrough. Hallelujah. And from this day forward, Father, I thank you. We're going to see more, greater things, the greater works of Jesus manifesting in our lives. And so we thank you and we bless you for it. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you guys. You know, if there's anyone here, anyone watching, and if you're not sure that if you died today, that you would be in heaven, God wants you to know that He loves you, and He has a wonderful plan for your life. He loves you so much that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to fulfill the promise to send a Savior to all who believe on Him. We've all sinned. The Bible says we've all sinned. And you know what? There was death that came between us and God. But now He's come to offer us eternal life and restore the relationship. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Amen? That's Romans 10, 13. And you know what? You're a whosoever. So you're included. If you will confess with your mouth, Jesus as your Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead there's a promise that you'll be saved yes. you'll be saved if you'd like to receive Christ Jesus into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior and you'd like to be born again have a brand new life just pray this prayer with your heart and with your mouth out loud say dear Heavenly Father I come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Pardon me. Thank you, Lord. Sorry, I just had to swallow. <laughs> you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and my Savior, and if I believe in my heart 
that you raised Jesus from the dead, I will be saved. So I believe right now. Hallelujah. Woo! I believe. Say it again. I believe that Jesus lived the perfect life on my behalf and died to pay for my sin. And he was raised again the third day. I turn away from the world. I turn my back on the devil and on sin. And I choose to follow you, Lord Jesus, all the days of my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Be my friend. Thank you, God, for hearing me today. I receive the free gift of salvation. And if you've just prayed that, then I want you to say this. I'm saved, I'm born again, and I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Listen, if you pray this prayer from your heart with faith, I want to tell you today your sins have been forgiven. And you are on your way to heaven because you have Jesus Christ in your life. And you know, there are some things that are really important. We want to say welcome to the family of God. But as a child of God now, it's important to, to get a Bible and to read it every day. It's important, that, and if you have a phone or something that you like to use, there's a Bible app called Blue Letter Bible. And it has, it has a lot of good studies in it. And uh, you can look up the meanings of words. It's great. So download that app right away. Thank you, Lord. Number two, talk to God every day. That's what prayer is. It's just talking to God. And you can tell Him anything about your life. Number three, become part of a Bible-believing group or church that honors the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Be around strong believers who will encourage you and lift you up in your walk with God. Number four, share your faith with others. Share what God's done with, in you with others. And remember, if you make a mistake, always run toward God. Don't run from Him. We'd love it if you would contact us with your decision to follow Jesus. You can find us at our website, www.pathwayministriesrevival.com. You can even write us, Pathway Ministries, Inc., Incorporated, Box 31074, Broadway and Taylor, Saskatoon, S7H5S8. And you can message us on Facebook. We want to hear about your decision to follow Jesus. God loves you, and uh, we do too. And we just want to bless you today, and thank you for joining us here in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you.